Welcome to Jenkins Infra Team meeting. It's the 9th of November. Um, reminder that we adhere to the Jenkins Code of Conduct when we're here. Um, in terms of announcements, we've got the Jenkins 2.320 release that's in progress. Uh, and it's looking good. The war file is done. The Docker images are done. We still need to run the checklist. Helm, Helm chart uh, refactoring is in progress. Hervé, did you want to give a brief summary of the progress there? Yeah, we are um, simplifying uh, the structure of the Helm file. Uh, and, uh, so we'll, uh, in the, finally, we'll have uh, one file for the public K8S uh, cluster and another for the CI uh, K8 uh, Kubernetes cluster. And it will uh, be easier to, to read and understand them. We've started by uh, uh, splitting uh, the chart repository in two with one with the and management files and uh, the other uh, just for the for our charts so they can be updated uh, separately great thank you thanks very much uh, jenkins election voter registration has now closed as announced with 81 registered voters uh, ballots will be sent probably during the course of this week all right, so Damien had assembled a, a bunch of really excellent notes on, on things that have happened recently. Uh, let's, I think we should go through them just to be sure that, that we've got, got an understanding. So we released a major security release last Thursday and a weekly to match with it. Uh, had, to, had to deal with some issues on the VPN. Hervé, you had had to do a, a, actually quite a deep dive investigation there to fix that thing. Thanks very, very much. And uh, the release was delivered on time and had the desired content. Anything that you wanted to share, Hervé, to highlight what we learned from that? Um, it was a, a problem uh, with the VPN machine, uh, which has a uh, three different networks configured on it, one for uh, public, um, public infrastructure, another I don't remember, but Damien will say more in a minute, and uh, a third one which uh, wasn't used and uh, was in provision of a private, private cluster. And so when the machine starts, um, uh, there were uh, conflicts uh, between uh, cloud init and uh, the network configuration and inverting uh, the two uh, network interface. So we had to fix them. So we'll, we could be able to have them in the correct order. And uh, we also discussed about um, um, getting rid of uh, the third uh, network. So we could use a, a far smaller uh, machine because uh, for uh, the, the recommend for free networks uh, um, require uh, a quite big machine, uh, virtual machine for that. It's detailed a little bit uh, later, I think. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Damien, anything that you wanted to add there in terms of additional notes? No, that was a perfect explanation. So oh. I'm sorry, um, I've been time zoned. I thought it was in one hour, so I didn't check the clock. My uh, sincere apologies. Uh, welcome, welcome. To, we need to persuade governments to stop meddling with clocks. Vote for people who stop meddling with clocks. Yes. So we... for, yep. just a note, I received a message from Olivier that he's oh. not able to join us because he started a new job and he's quite busy. Excellent. Well, thank you for it. I'm, I'm grateful he let us know. That's great. Thank you. We had a certificate renewal failure on archives.jenkins.io and Demian's got a good question here. Should we consider in the future using traffic as a better way to manage these kinds of services? And I think it's, 
it's a it's a good idea. We had intentionally chosen a separate machine to spread the bandwidth costs in this case, so that this one was running on Oracle Cloud. But that wouldn't stop us, if I understand correctly, from using traffic. Right? We could we could run a small Kubernetes cluster there and run traffic on it. Oh, you don't need Kubernetes at all. Um, oh, you can use traffic in uh, Kubernetes, but here it's the perfect usage for a tool like traffic. It's when you have a single VM with a single Docker engine and you have one, two, three services that you want to expose on the public IP of that machine. So you only have Docker and it's a single machine. Ah, okay. And in that case, traffic will be another Docker container that will be spun up. It will watch for the local Docker container and it will auto configure the virtual host based on the labels of these containers. And it also manage Let's Encrypt automatically. That means you will have renewal like we do, we do, but that means removing third bot and the cron tab. It will be managed by traffic itself. Nice. Um, it simplifies the setup and also it allows to reproduce that locally because that will mean you can spin up only the Docker Compose stack. You don't need the Ubuntu Docker part of the VM. If you want to test locally the services setup, that also enable WebSocket by default, especially for Jenkins uh, instances when they are in the backend. Uh, the problems that will cost outside the migration. First, we will we might need to run traffic in front of Apache, in front of eventually something else. Because on a lot of Apache, we have specific routes that might be hard to transfer to traffic because traffic is only a reverse proxy while Apache is both a proxy and a web server. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the second one is that Let's Encrypt won't be uh, managed, the certificate generation won't be managed by CertBot. You, we completely dedicate that to traffic. So I don't know if it works out of the box with our monitorings or our tools right now. That's, okay. that's the balance. Thank you. All right. Uh, next topic then was VPN. Anything additional, Hervé, that needs to be added there? No, it's good. Um, there's a not. Uh, what do I um, there are, there are uh, some uh, improvements that can be done uh, on on your fix, but uh, not not really something. Uh, I don't have something to add. Anyone interested in starting to work with Puppet or starting on the infrastructure can also take that improvement issues. Uh, that will be uh, uh, refining the code that uh, Erwin and I wrote last week. It's mainly template, uh, adding templates and stuff. So anyone interested in getting started on Puppet can take the Jira. It's a, I think, did I put? Yeah, it's the Infra 3124. It's already tagged as newbie friendly if needed. Excellent, thank you. And, and Damien, I would propose here, I'm gonna shift and let you continue the meeting. I, I'm the wrong voice, so I'm gonna be quiet and take notes. Yeah, thank, thanks. Um, so sorry again for being late. Uh, thanks, Hervé, also for taking taking over. That's a good thing we can. That means we share the information correctly. Uh, next topic is the cost is related to the cost at least on EC2. So we are now using spot instances for both uh, virtual machines and Kubernetes workers used on CI Jenkins IO. Um, it's only been three full days, but it sounds like that the billing is going down. We need, uh, let's say, to wait 10 more days just to be sure that it really has an impact. However, as we saw earlier today, the trending, uh, the cost explorer on AWS stopped showing us the machines used for IMEM or KS as increasing compared to last month. So it's a good indicator. We have to keep it uh, checking. Uh, daily check. And yes. one of the concerns for spot instances was what if they get evicted? Have we had any cases of developers or others complaining, hey, my my agent died unexpectedly or was no, not available? Um, no, not yet. Um, 
that has been underlined by Jesse, and Jesse started a walk. Uh, I saw a public issue about um, being able to restart a stage automatically of a pipeline if the cause of failure, the detected cause of failure, is the agent being put offline. Mm. And it sounds like there are part of the code already ready inside the pipeline plugin. So I really hope that we, we could be able to benefit from that. But as for today, uh, I have to communicate first on the developer mailing list to ask them. I forgot to send the email. So you have to do it now. And so if you have this issue, don't stay to report it. We will switch back to on demand then. Um, for the container, the risk is low because our very high phone uh, uh, based on AWS recommendation we don't have a single type of uh, worker instance. The constant is that all the workers will have 16 gigabytes and uh, 16 CPU and 64 gigabytes. However, we use every type of instances on the uh, on the, the series M something, M4, I think. Um, the goal is that it's a recommendation to have the best available spot pool, which means most of the time the, the the cheapest and the the one that is uh, less prone to being evicted because you have a lot and algorithm select the pool where you have the, the most so let's see but outside this we don't have any more uh, yeah uh, any other uh, safety check here Next topic is about around Azure virtual machine usage. So Tim spotted the uh, issues related to the configuration. We weren't sure if it was our configuration uh, Jenkins cask, our puppet, or the plugin Azure VM itself. So we have we have done a tiny maneuver yesterday um, to try to fix that setup. Uh, the consequence was that. EC2 was way more used than Azure VM for the Linux and IMIM machines. For Windows, it was equal. Uh, not sure what happened. It sounds like that it might be an old bug when you click apply in the plugin itself that messed up the configuration a few weeks ago. So our config might have been okay, but the latest version seems to be okay. So let's see. Um, so yeah. We have to double check with Tim that it's okay, but he was quite quite busy. Um, the symptom for everyone here, if you start seeing on CI Jenkins IO once logged, you have on the left menu a cloud statistics. If you don't see the free kind of Azure VM setups, so it's Ubuntu, Ubuntu IMIM, and Windows, then it means that something happened and um, the cloud statistics are not even reported, which means there is something wrong with the configuration. Most of the time, a simple save or config reload of configuration as code will solve the issue. Help me again. It was the three types were HIMEM and what were the other two? Ubuntu, Ubuntu IMIM, and Windows. Thanks. Um, Something else now. Um, so we have checked uh, the machines. We might think about changing the limits, meaning decreasing the limits for the EC2 instances to have less machines spawn in EC2 and allow for more machines in Azure. I need to write a Jira issue because there is an on ongoing uh, thing. It's requesting to the Azure support to increase the limits in terms of CPUs on the region for us. And finally, the last step will be using spot instances on Azure as well to decrease the Azure cost as well with the same risk and safety issue done on EC2. We can be evicted. Um, we, incoming Jira issue to write down the details and points documentation. There might be differences between both clouds. Finally, just a word on the new provider. 
it's still the same. It will be for later. Um, we have the need to uh, pipeline libraries the Terraform task that we are using today on Jenkins Infra AWS. So then we could create easily new repository for each cloud provider for Terraform infrastructure as code. The oncoming are digital ocean and scaleway because we should have a bit of credit for both and they provide managed Kubernetes. Um, we also have the CAFRIS on the two OSUSL machine, which is more puppet and infrastructure uh, work. And uh, Darren Pop uh, mentioned Kivo Cloud recently, which, which is a cloud that provides managed CAFRIS cluster, meaning Kubernetes cluster. So that could be interesting uh, along with OVH to ask for sponsor. So anyone interested uh, could ask or we will check when we will have time. That's all for the costs. Any question? Okay, let's go to the next topic. Uh, Wiki Jenkins CI. So huge thanks for the work that everyone put in that, especially RV. Uh, now the service is back. It's uh, static files only from the exports. It's highly available. We have replicated service. It's virus free. <laughs> Uh, because there were some virus on the HTML commands. Good catch, Harvey. Thanks for catching that. A bit of luck, but a bit of uh, focus. And, uh, that, that would have been a shame if we have shipped <laughs> yeah, virus to our end users. We weren't able to, to discover when that content was injected. It could be years ago. It could be during the September hack. It's, it's not possible to check. We don't have any clothes on that. But it has been... Uh, removed. So I see the phrase, it's replicated in AK AKS, but I'm not sure I understand what that means. How, how did, is that an, a natural outcome of having used a Docker image? Correct. At any moment, you always have two instances and you are load balanced between two instances because the service is stateless. That means that when we upgrade the Docker image, adding content, roles, maintenance, you always have one instance which is always ready to handle the traffic, which is migration, cluster upgrades, and everything for that service. That wasn't the case with Confluence because Confluence was not able to be horizontally scaled. Which led to a proposal from you, Mark, uh, that also uh, Hervé mentioned, uh, that could be a good thing now to put Wiki Jenkins IO uh, behind Fastly, like we already do for Jenkins IO and plugins Jenkins IO front end today. Um, so that will mean creating a new uh, wiki.origin.jenkins IO domain that will point directly to AKS and moving the current domain to Fastly. We have the same order of magnitude of data on both. Uh, we don't have as much traffic on this one than on Jenkins IO, but still that could avoid uh, bandwidth, that could uh, allow us to not have that much bandwidth on AKS directly. Um, does it seem a good idea? Is there any voice against that? So, okay. So, Mark, <laughs> I see uh, Mark Wait right Jira issue on the notes. So, I assume that you will. Thanks a lot. Um, so that means on a medium term, we can start to use what we learned on that one to restart the work that Olivier did on Jenkins IO related to the fact that generating a Docker image with all the content in, inside, so we can scale it horizontally easily, but with the downside of adding a bit more time between once a pull request is merged and when it's deployed. So that was an effort that was limited by update CLI and our usage that will be medium term. Expect something January. So I was trying to understand what you meant by restart the work on Jenkins.io. It's the Docker image containing the content. Got it. Correct. Thank you. Because there's there's lots of work to migrate things from wiki.jenkins.io to www.jenkins.io, but that's that's well outside know, yeah. the infra team. Correct. You can put my name on writing the Jira issue. I will try to phrase it better and to underline the, 
the goal and why did we stop and what are the next steps. That's all for the wiki. Is there any question? Things not clear? Okay, next one, AKS Elm Chart Elm File. So uh, um, there is a huge work being done around the Elm Chart and Elm File. I won't go into details because there are still discussions, but the idea is to separate Elm File and charts. So the charts can be packaged and tested on their own. They can be reused somewhere else and are reused outside the infrastructure for some. And it helps us to keep um, smaller repository easier to understand and easier to get started with. I think Aditya will confirm that it will help because right now there are M files everywhere, everywhere as well. That's the near goal. We are working um, quite fast, trying to not break things these days with Hervé. I expect something finished around next week, maybe. That includes uh, adding more automatic update of the components and dependencies. Next one is ratings Jenkins IO, unless there is a question for the charts. So thanks, Gavin, for fixing ratings this weekend. Uh, so, so give me some background on that. What happened that caused it to break? Did it, it, just, it just stopped working? Was there something he had to do? I have no idea if it has been broken since months or recently, or if it was broken at all. I just know that Gavin worked on it and I saw a message saying that the, the tiny cloud and the changelog are back. Thanks, Hervé, for pointing me uh, because I didn't know what ratings uh, was doing before. <laughs> um, what I know, though, is that that uh, uh, so now it's under our pipeline library for the Docker test, so we can start uh, having automatic updates. However, um, that will be a topic. There has been an infra issue I will add it to the notes that we mentioned on the IRC channel. The goal will be to migrate ratings from the virtual machine on AWS where it is to the AKS cluster. The challenge behind that is the database. It requires a managed Postgres database today. So there have been some question from a discussion with our team and Gavin about changing the kind of database, CockroachDB and something else. As for today, in the, in the context of the effort to decrease the AWS spendings and having something more resilient, the first step could be using a Postgres that managed database in Azure and migrate the Docker container service from the virtual machine to a pod in Kubernetes. Kevin and Tim were saying it should work with Cockroach, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I consider, I, I will propose to separate the topics just yeah. to be sure. Uh, honestly, I, I love PostgreSQL and I don't see the need to change, but maybe the price or the sake of sponsorship or just the pleasure of trying something else, I don't mind. But in terms of pure infrastructure, there, there is an iteration to migrate first from AWS to AKS without changing the app itself. So, um, uh, yep. Could you describe again why, why the change from AWS, from AWS to Azure? Uh, is that a cost balancing thing? What's, the, what's the, the benefit of making such a change? So uh, the cost first for the service itself, Postgres database are almost the same cost on both clouds. Okay. Uh, the first one is uh, in AKS, it will cost us less for running the service in a pod than having a whole virtual machine with its own public uh -huh. interface on uh, AWS. So this would move it from a separate virtual machine into our, our Kubernetes cluster. Correct. And allow us to manage it with all the techniques we use to manage the cluster. Thank you. Exactly. Okay, I missed that, okay. And then the nice to have, it will be easier to manage. So especially for the developer, they will be more autonomous than on the virtual machine. Um, let me add on the notes. Uh, ratings, rating. Here we are. I got it, the reference of the Jenkins Infra. So anyone interested on that uh, issue, don't hesitate to add a message uh, on Jira or on IRC. Um, 
if you aren't, we will take that uh, by default. Don't worry. Is there any question related rating? Thanks again, Gavin and Hervé and Tim for that work. Next topic is the Kubernetes 1.20 upgrade. Um, Hervé, I think that uh, the topic, were you able to start working on that or is it still- That's it, that's it. Okay. No problem. Uh, so that will be a subject for next time. Uh, thanks for taking care of that. Uh, next topic is GDK updates for 11 and, and 8. Just wanted to do a sanity check. First, the Jenkins Docker image. Did we use the latest GDK 8 during the LTS release last week, uh, Mark? Uh, so we used, we used the JDK 8 302 rather than 312 because the Docker image for 312 was not yet available. We did use the latest JDK 11. So 11013 for the LTS last week, but because AU3812 was not yet ready. Okay. Just because. Yeah, it so was not sure. available yet. The image was not available. And so I'll, we'll, I'll, we'll be checking soon. Okay, cool. So yes. So for the Jenkins agent, I haven't checked yet. I I'm submitted more... pull requests for those as well. Cool. Oops. But I, I, and I believe they've been merged. I don't think we've released yet with those. Okay, cool. On the infrastructure, so the virtual machines on both all clouds and all operating system are running the latest version the, with the, the security uh, issues fixed. Uh, the tools, if we use the tools, are also doing the same. For the container, there is a number, uh, we are still on uh, 8 u three. Uh, O2, so for the Kubernetes container running on CI Jenkins IO, uh, but we have the latest 11 and latest 17, of course. Um, oh, oh, and 17 was one that I, I haven't checked to see if on the image, on the controller image, um, I think it's still awaiting the Docker image. Uh, yeah, I think it's not, it's the same as as eight in that it needs uh it's oh. this original 17 zero not latest because they haven't made the latest available yet oh no that was the first uh, released before oh, it is, is it? eight oh okay. the, the the base image that we depend the upstream base image for jenkins we don't have a 17 for the controller yet i thought it existed in preview i thought we had one oh that... there has been a preview oh yeah I, I didn't preview know preview image needs to be revisited. I, I, I'm pretty sure it, it exists. It's, oh, it's not official. It's, it's specifically called itself preview, but it does exist, I think. Correct. Oops. I've added the link to the 17 preview that you mentioned. And yes, you're correct. That's not the latest version. Okay. Um, that might be interesting to propose pull request us as Jenkins Infra to add update CLI update process on the images. What do you think? I would, I would love that. I think we got one or more forms of them that came from Dependabot, but not reliably. Whereas update CLI, we know works reliably to do the job. Yep. The risk being update CLI documentation still being not really complete and easy. It could be an issue for contributors though. So that's a fine balance. Right. That will be mentioned on the pull request and that will be put uh, to the decision of the maintainer area. Mm -hmm. That's all for the images. So for the infrastructure, the must have will be focusing on improving uh, images on infra containers. 
uh, the idea will be moving the Docker images to Packer. So we'll build the same uh, all-in-one image and we will be able to deliver future GDK or Maven updates at the same time for every kind on CI Jenkins. So, yeah. Uh, finally, cleanups. I don't have anything to say on the cleanups. We still have some old Puppet roles, some Azure storage accounts and resources to clean up. We weren't able to, to work on that. So that's uh, an ongoing process. I have one last topic that you underlined last night, Mark, if no one mind. It's just, um, as you saw, uh, the you had to put the PPC was it the PPC agent? Oh no, it's S three ninety X. Yeah. Okay, that's it. So the main the IBM uh, machine. So it was handling jobs aimed uh, to be built on Intel. Well, what it what it had was it had a correct label that said it's Java. Yep. But Java is was assumed by some of the jobs as meaning Java 8. And in that case, Java 8 is not available for S390X in a version that we are willing to use. Correct. So that's related to labels. So I propose that we continue the work that Hervé did a few weeks ago uh, for the IMEM memory allocation. So that for these machines, PPC, ARM, and uh, we don't let them have the Java only, and we create a, uh, a, a label like Java-IRM, Java-S390. So if you use Java, you have an Intel machine allocated by default, and you need to specify a specific label with a dash. Okay. Um, for a reminder, uh, Hervé, after the IMEM, changed also the convention for Windows. So you have Docker dash Windows if you want a Docker with specifically Windows. So I know that create long um, labels, but it allows to avoid accidental so changes. Does it sound a good idea for everyone? Uh, if it's okay, I will want to take that subject. Okay. Just I want to play with the labels. <laughs> Often. Yeah, so, and for me, I was, I like the notion of Java's platform independence, but in this case, it was too broad, right? It's, I, I, I think platform independence is really cool in Java, but in this case, it was assuming Java 8 was available everywhere and, and that assumption was wrong. Yeah, and especially in that area where we change often, and we recently changed the GDK and the fact that we are not using the latest LTS now on Jenkins in general, I would prefer to yeah, provide a standard Intel machine unless right. you specify another CPU option. It's still, it feels too young and yeah, depend on what we are doing uh, that could be uh, troublesome for the contributor. Makes sense, okay. That was the last subject for me. Is there another subject for all of you? Cool, thanks a lot. I'm really sorry for the being late. Um, sounded like we keep that uh, 30 minutes. Um, yep, I need to publish the meeting note instead of Olivier now, since he's not available. Uh, Mark, I trust you to update the uh, upload on YouTube. Yes. Okay, so next next uh, meet next meeting should be next week as usual. Thanks a lot. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye bye.